So the first thing I notice looking at this question is choice D, which includes a comma and the word and. So that has two possible functions. One is if we have a, a list of three or more things, then that, that could happen. But more likely, this is used to join two sentences. It's a comma and a conjunction. So as I'm reading this, I'm basically going to test that possibility out. I'm going to see if it makes sense to kind of stop the sentence there and, and restart it. So I don't know if it's right, but it's an easy test for me to perform. So let's, let's try it out. In 1959, marine biologist Dr. Albert Jones found the Underwater Adventure Seeker, a scuba diving club. Okay, that could be a sentence, so check one sentence there. Um, then we would skip the end because that's just a connector word and then, then continue. That is the oldest club for black divers in the United States, and that has helped thousands of diving enthusiasts become certified in the field. Well, that one's tricky because it, it does kind of sound like a sentence, right? That is the oldest club for black divers in the United States. That could be a sentence. And then so could the next part. That has helped thousands of driving enthusiasts become certified in the field. Now, it sounds a little weird to me, but if those the, the words that are, are subjects of a sentence, are subjects and then have verbs that kind of follow them in a very traditional sentence structure way, then we're joining two sentences again. We have another and. But notice that and has no comma meaning that these things are not sentences. They can't be. Otherwise, we would need a comma to join the two complete sentences. And then we'd have like three sentences all joined with ands. That would be weird, but I guess it's doable, but it, that's not what's happening here. So that, that's telling me these are not two sentences. Something else is going on here. This is weird. So now I'm, I'm going to start to think about some of these other ones, right? Am I really breaking this piece off? Like, what is it? If it's not a sentence, what is it? So let's try it again. In 1959, marine biologist Dr. Albert Jones founded the Underwater Adventure Seekers. Okay, that sounds like a sentence. A scuba diving club. That is the oldest club for black divers in the United States, and that has helped thousands of diving enthusiasts become certified in the field. Again, adding that pause there, that break as in B and C, it just seems weird. Let's try without it. Let's try A. A marine biologist Dr. Albert Jones founded the Underwater Adventure Seekers. A scuba, uh, nah, a scuba diving club that is the oldest club for black divers in the United States and that has helped thousands of diving enthusiasts become certified in the field. It's still a little clunky, but I understand it. A is the answer here. Here's what's happening. This is our sentence, okay? And it ends there with that comma. Then we have an appositive, an appositive. Now we've seen these tested in other questions in, in much more obvious ways, but this comma is allowing me to define the adventure seekers, right? So basically, we have a very, very long definition of this thing. It's longer than the main sentence itself, and that's because it's a bit of a compound with two things that we're using to describe it. It is a scuba diving club that is the oldest club for black divers in the United States, and it is a scuba diving club that has helped thousands of diving enthusiasts become certified in the field. That's basically what we're saying. And so there's really no punctuation necessary. And that doesn't surprise me because the word that rarely gets punctuation in English. It is a connector word that allows us to add on an extra clause, but it doesn't really get punctuation with it. Now, we could start sentences with that, and that's why this is a little trickier than usual. We could say, that is a fat cat, right? That's a sentence, right? That's a fat cat right there, over there, right? So you could say stuff like that. It, it would be a sentence, but that's not what's happening here. The word that here is just used to describe this club. We have a very long appositive that's basically the entire end of the sentence. This is hard. I would say that pretty much every one of my students gets this question wrong. Um, I don't really know why. I, I, I get that it's just a weird sentence no matter what, but I think it's because they don't really have that um, idea of, of what to think about when they look at answer choices, right? So notice what I did. I started with choice D. That had the most clear rule that I could test. It was close, but it failed that test and something sounded weird. And, and then I could think about punctuation in other ways and other parts of that clause and, and notice that it wasn't quite right. So I looked at that first because it was the, a comma and a conjunction is a pretty standard way to join two sentences. Then I kind of looked at both of these. I didn't really think about what the difference might be between a comma and a dash, but either way it was like, is there a reason to break this apart? I get that I could just end the sentence with marine biologist Dr. Albert Jones founded the Underwater Adventure Seekers, a scuba diving club. And I could put a, pe a period there. But what's that other stuff doing? It's descriptive. It's continuing the idea. And just out of like 
my own knowledge, I know that the word that doesn't usually get punctuation. There might be rare cases where something is getting inserted in just the right place and, and maybe it does, but that's not happening here. So um, another, another problem might be that if we put a comma, we would be suggesting that this uh, scuba diving thing is kind of extra. So we might try to read the sentence as, Marine biologist Dr. Albert Jones founded the Underwater Adventure Seekers. That is the oldest club for black divers in the United States. And, and if I do that, it immediately sounds like that second part, starting with that, is its own sentence. And that's no good. Again, I have that same problem of the punctuation just isn't right to make that its own sentence. I would need an and. I would need something else. And, and it's just not there. So tricky one, for sure. Let me know if you have comments. Let me know if you have questions. But uh yeah, most people get this wrong, and I still think it follows the rules. You just got to know where to go. And after we've checked those two things, it's fine to just have no punctuation at all. It's it's just one long a positive.